Okay, in this second video uh, we are looking at inspection techniques as a part of the quality assurance process. Uh, and inspection, as a reminder, is all about looking at the static system, at not executing anything, looking at documentation, looking at code, not running it. And uh, there are essentially two, two kinds of techniques. Uh, you can do this manually, so you really read through that, uh, and you do it uh, in an automated or in a dynamic Yeah, spelling is difficult in a dynamic way. And uh, manual techniques are, for example, as we already discussed in uh, the requirements module, reviews, where you read through the requirement specification and try to find uh, issues, inconsistencies. You try to figure out if any needs are missing. Uh, and essentially, just by reading, by thinking, you try to detect uh, issues. And there are, for reviews, there are of course formal procedures, so you have certain checklists or a kind of, for example, perspective-based readings, different people look at it from different ways. Uh, and there is of course ad hoc, where you just basically, without any process, you read through, we try to find uh, issues. Reviews are uh, extremely effective, so they are quite useful, and they are, as a matter of fact, uh, standard practice at Definitely the bigger companies, the established software companies, but also at smaller ones. So this is, uh, again, to remind you, inspection is nothing that you can replace with testing. It's actually a very useful standalone technique. And maybe as a, as a reasoning why this is so good uh, is that uh, on the one hand you can check properties that you otherwise could not. Um, for example, imagine code readability or the, how well commented there is a code. Uh, that's nothing you can do with an automated test. So even if you can execute the system, even if you have everything, uh, checking the, uh, whether you follow certain guidelines is just often easier in a, uh, in a, if in a manual way if you review the, the code. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason uh, that is good is essentially that you build up a shared understanding. So if we talk about code, uh, it's not so common anymore if you have code reviews that only one person knows how a certain piece of code works, but by reading it, other people start getting that knowledge as well, and in this way you actually effectively share the knowledge within the company, which is really a struggle otherwise. So that's another reason why we would like to do uh, code reviews and these two things together really make that uh, this is such a standard process in many companies. Then we should also mention that we actually have dynamic ways of doing inspection uh, or automated ways. So for example there are tools that are called linters uh, that can automatically check code for uh, for example, style violations. You might have a certain uh, coding style that people have to follow and the tool automatically detects that. Uh, the tools nowadays are so good that they can also detect, for example, what is called a bad smell. So code fragments that are uh, written in a, in a suboptimal way and that are known to cause problems later on. So these kind of can highlight them and can say, well, you, you cannot commit this until you have fixed it or, well, please fix it if you can. So that's a very effective thing. Then, in general, uh, there is the whole area of natural language processing. So basically techniques that try to read text and reason based on that. And that's, for example, used uh, in requirements engineering to automatically try to analyze requirements or try to uh, check the requirements whether they fulfill certain legal standards. So these are things that are also getting more and more common. And then finally, um, something that has been uh, an extremely active research area for a while, but now is getting more and more uh, common in practice is the area of program analysis and repair. So you have tools that automatically check your software code, uh, find issues with it, and actually repair them. So last year this was quite a new thing, that's why I had it 
sort of a news article in the lecture, but Facebook has now launched this as a standard process. So if there's a bug, if tests fail, automated tests, then there is an automated program that analyzes the code and tries to fix it until the test passes. So this is actually not an engineer that has to go in, but there's some kind of automated process um, that does this without anyone intervening. And then the engineers basically just have to sign off and say, yes, this is a good solution. Uh, so overall, this is an extremely powerful tool. And just as a reminder, uh, you don't really need the running system. You can do this with parts of your code. You can do it with an architecture documentation. So uh, the, it, this can be done very, very early, even if there's nothing running. Uh, this can be done in a waterfall process uh, years before the final product is ready. So it's an, uh, not to underestimate uh, technique that you can run on basically anything. Okay, so from now on, we'll leave the, the area of inspection. Uh, this was just a quick dive into that, but now we go into the uh, dynamic part of actually executing the system.